So hi, I'm Roger. And I'm Doug. And I'm Doug. And welcome to this week's episode of the Spondananda Show. So I've been journaling for pretty much my whole life. I started journaling when I was in high school, and I've been journaling ever since. And it's been an incredible journey. Uh, and I've gone through many, many uh, styles and forms of journaling. For a long time, I had different journals for different things. I had a dream journal, I had a gratitude journal, I had a collage journal, I had a, you know, a dear diary journal. And uh, over time, all those journals have kind of merged for me. And now the journal that I'm currently uh, writing is sort of a collage journal, it's my gratitude journal, it's my dream journal, it's my everyday journal, it's, I, I make lists in it, I do mind mapping, I do all kinds of things in it. I draw. Uh, and so this week's episode of the Spondinanda Show is dedicated to uh, exercises in journaling. Ways to connect the dots between our consciousness and our unconsciousness. Ways of uncovering wisdom and discovering the hidden meanings in things. But writing can also be uplifting. It can be fun and creative, and it can really capture our lightness. So let's get started. So the first journaling exercise is called the focal point. And it's basically you'll take, a, it's a timed exercise, and you can decide whatever the most appropriate time for you is, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Uh, and you're going to pick one topic. So basically you'll write at the top of your page, I want to explore, and then you'll fill in the blank, right? And then you're going to take that time that you've allotted to yourself, and you're going to write about that one focused topic. And here are some, uh, some guidelines, or some questions, or some things to consider about your focused topic. Okay, so the first one, the first thing that comes to mind is, And then here are a few others. What do I find below the surface? What scares me about this? What gives me hope? And where do I go from here? So this next exercise uh, is very different than the first exercise. So actually, let's stand up. No, actually, go ahead and stand up. <laughs> and we're going we're gonna, to uh, take some time to warm up the the fingers, the hands, and the wrist. Okay, so go ahead and just stretch your arms straight out in front of you. And spread your fingers as wide as you can, right? Ah, and then pull the hands back towards your face, right? And keep the fingers stretched wide. And then you're going to take one finger at a time, and you're going to draw them towards your palm, right? So one finger at a time. Ah, right? And then stretch the fingers wide again. And then make a fist. And you're going to sort of motorcycle the wrist. And then you can roll the wrist around. Good. And then go ahead and just shake the hands. Right. Ah. You can shake your whole body too while you're at it. Right. But mostly you're focused on your hands and your wrist. Right. When you're finished with writing, you might want to take some time to do a little hand massage. Right. All right. So let's continue. So this is fast and furious stream of consciousness. This is like throw everything you know about writing out the window. Right? You're going to take time, like again you can do this as a timed exercise, and you're not going to have a topic, you're not going to have a focal point, you're just going to like say go, and you're going to start writing. Right? And whatever comes out, comes out. It might be words, it might be scribbles, it might have punctuation, it might, might not have punctuation. Right? You're not worried about grammar. You're not even worried about completing a sentence. When it's over, you'll notice that there will have been connections made that you will never have made before. I feel like I should, um, I feel like I should be changing my, I should be changing my outfit for every exercise. <laughs> so the third exercise is called mind mapping, and I love mind mapping. You're going to take a seed word, whatever that word is, and you're going to write it in the center of your page. And from that word, I tend to like, I make a little circle around it. And you're just going to like spider out all these other words and thoughts or ideas that come from this one, one seed thought. Here are some recent ones that I've made uh, in my journal. Right, so this one's titled Doorway. And then any thoughts that came out of that one word. And then again over here is Milkweed. 
it's a lot of fun. So go ahead and give it a try and see what happens. So the fourth exercise in journaling is actually blind contour drawing. And I think drawing is an awesome way of journaling. It really accesses a new part of the brain and allows uh, a different way of creative thinking to come out. You're going to take an object or a person, or something around you, a landscape, whatever that is, and you're going to draw it. But you're not going to look at the page. So you'll find your starting place on the page, you'll look up at your object, and you'll start to draw right, without lifting your pen. The idea is that you're going to draw exactly what you see. Let your, let your eye follow the contours of whatever you're drawing, and you draw those contours without lifting the pen and without looking down. Right? You can do this as like a quick 10-second uh, sketch. You could do this as a five-minute exercise to see if you can record the details. All right, here it goes. Et voila! And so the fifth exercise is collage. Uh, some people like to call it contemplative collage. But it's basically uh, using images to capture something. You may not even know what that something is. Uh, so basically what you do is you go through some magazines or a, st a stack of images that maybe you've collected from other places and you just select things that uh, appeal to you, that capture your attention, that draw you in in some way. It doesn't have to make sense at first. You make a stack of those images and then you go through them, you cut them out, arrange them and glue them into your journal uh, sort of more intuitively. So not trying to make a pretty picture, not trying to create something, but letting the intuitive, more instinctual process happen. Enjoy these journal exercises, blend them, mix and match, tr try new things, uh, take variations of, of these exercises and go off on your own and do your own thing. Uh, thank you for watching another episode of the Spondananda Show. See you all next week. What would you like? You could have anything in the world, what would you want? If I could have anything I want? No. If I could have anything I want, what would I want to eat right now? That's tough. Because the first thing that comes to my mind is pizza. <laughs> <laughs> pizza with what on it? You know what, I, you know what I really want? I want a Caesar salad. I was in Las Vegas once and ordered a Caesar salad, and I'm not joking. The Caesar salad came, it was one big leaf of lettuce, one just one like big piece of romaine lettuce. They got it all wrong already. With like these like um, long croutons, like these long like cracker like croutons, like there were like three of them stacked like in a little like thing with like some parmesan, like big chunks of parmesan like, uh, like on top. Were you happy with that? It was delicious. Oh. But it was too, way too like, it was way too like fancy, modern, like frou frou. Yeah, frou frou. Caesar salad. I think it was at Caesar's Palace. No, I, was, I think I said Atlantic City. I'm to... a big gambler. Big bucks. <laughs> no, baby, needs... baby needs a new pair of shoes. <laughs> baby need a new Cadillac. <laughs>